We've got the E30 back in the shop again today. And we're gonna try to test fit the S54 in today. Oh. Man. That's a tight engine bay. And it's still dirty. We didn't get time to wash it. It's been raining. We have trees falling. It's just been crazy. Check out the vlog channel for that yeah. footage. We had some trees falling over our shed and stuff. So yeah, we're, I think we're gonna take the subframe back off again. No way, really? Yeah, well I had put it on so we could roll it out to take the S54 out of my car. But now I don't think the E30 is gonna be leaving the shop for a while. I think it's just gonna, we're just gonna push it over and get to actually fabricating stuff. So subframe is gonna come out so we could test fit the S54, see what happens with that. Radiator, try to take off whatever is in the way, we're just gonna take it off. So far, this looks huge. <laughs> it definitely does. There's the old engine and transmission that came out and compared to this, it's definitely smaller. Doesn't look too much smaller, but it is smaller. But I think to make it easier on ourselves because this is pretty heavy as well, because it's an iron block and it's just, it's just really heavy. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to take off a lot of the stuff. Some stuff I know is not going to work without removing a bunch of stuff out of there, like the intake plenum, the brake booster is gonna be in the way. So we're gonna take the plenum off, we're gonna take off all the accessories and all that, um, because we're gonna have to do that in the future anyway, since we're gonna be bulletproofing everything. So I think I'm gonna take off the harnesses, everything. Just make it easier on ourselves to get the first test fit out of the way. Do you think you'll separate the transmission from the engine? I think I should, but I think we're just gonna try to do it without it. That way I'll, I could just drop the front subframe. The front subframe literally takes me 15 minutes at most to take off and put back on. So I think like even if I need to put it back on after we test fit it, I can do that, no problem. So I think we're just gonna leave everything attached first and if it doesn't work out, then we'll pull the transmission off. All right, so I'm gonna work on this side of the engine while Selena works on the other side. We're gonna try to disassemble all the stuff and as I'm disassembling it, I'll let you guys know what we're taking off. So first things first, I wanna remove this plenum and then I'm gonna to try to remove this entire harness or as much of it as I can. I just don't like, I don't wanna drag around this bulky thing and damage it by accident. So let's move all of this stuff out of the way. I'm sure some coolant is gonna spill out. So this hose clamp for these brake booster hoses on any of the stock E46 M3s or S54 engines in general, these clamps are probably already loose by now and you can already see how it's moving around. So it's a good idea to replace that hose clamp with something better. And sometimes these hoses go bad anyway, so might as well replace them. So now, as I said before in the last video on the E30, I was talking about how this plenum will not fit with the brake booster. A way around that is you can just run these individual throttle bodies with just open like a, I forgot what they're called, but they just have these little tunnel looking things that come off of it. And that would be the same setup, like you would run it like the same way you run a CSL airbox without the MAP sensor and you just put a MAP sensor and do a tune like that. So that's definitely one option that makes it a whole lot easier for us because then we can reuse that stock brake booster and it'll be a lot easier. But we'll see. And here we have the Home Depot special that I'm taking <laughs> off. Okay, that's not Home Depot, that's AutoZone, all right? That's a heater hose. For any of you guys, whenever you have any like breather hoses, uh, PCV, CCV system, usually these quick connects are made out of plastic. Same with the whole hard plastic hose that goes across. And this is not just for S54, this is for any car in general. Usually what you can do is you can just cut that hard plastic line off and then just run like a heater hose and it'll hold you over. So for me, it was supposed to hold me over until I ordered the factory one, but obviously we never got to it. <laughs> Yeah, this brake booster hose has seen better days. That whole harness can go. And we're gonna, I think we're just gonna tape up all these holes once we're done. So yeah, this manifold was actually damaged in the donor car, because the donor car was wrecked, and I never replaced it. That's why the oil dipstick section is all bent and the whole mount broke off. So we got to replace this mount, but some of these tabs, they're not replaceable. But we'll see what we're gonna do with the E30 setup. And if we need to, then we can buy another plenum. 
Are those expensive? The plan, I mean, I think they're like right around 200, 300 bucks. There we go. I'm gonna tape some of these up and write purge valve and whatever's coming out. Cause it might be a while before we put it back together. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But with the part shortages, like one thing that's already holding us up is for the rod bearings, I wanna use the ARP bolts and they're not in stock. They're back ordered with no date in mind. So we don't know when they're gonna come in. Hopefully soon, but we'll see. Oops, broke. No, it didn't. Yeah, that's how they're supposed to come out. Yeah, some of them come out like that, that's fine. We're gonna replace all of them with the newer styles that, those actually are not that bad. I thought they would be rustier. Like I was expecting this whole engine and everything to have much more corrosion because it sat for a little bit. So my side is done, what about yours? <laughs> it's going. What do you have left? We gotta get the alternator off and then the rest of the wiring for the throttle body actuators and all that. So I still got a couple minutes. This should be most of the harness ready to come out. Got mostly everything labeled except for the obvious things. And then we just have the fuel rail. The mitochondria. <laughs> Man. There are a lot of these tabs that are broken and stuff too. Hopefully I'm able to fix it or find a replacement. All right, so we got the hood off. Now this should make it much easier to work on all of this stuff in the front. We need to take the radiator out, the condenser out, all the stuff that we're not gonna use, we're just gonna pull it out. That way it's easier to test fit the S54. All right, so now it's time to take out the whole center console so that we can remove the automatic shifter so that we're able to see where the new shifter will line up. How does this come off? I don't remember. Do you? Uh, I don't think you're supposed to pull it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, you're right. So that comes off first, then there's a set screw. Because somebody put this on. So we gotta get that set screw out. Let me start taking this off. Let's try not to break any of this. 
Does it have any cracks? Nope. There's pills in here. Oh, those are mine. <laughs> are they really? <laughs> no! Oh, I was about to say. Oh, it's dirty. They are crazy pills. They had dogs in there. I ain't got no crazy pills. <laughs> I ain't crazy. I am sane. I'm very, very sane. To right. a certain extent. I guess. Okay, so that just slides right off. The simplicity. You gotta love it. Yep. Look at that. I just know with that S54, when we start getting it sideways, it's gonna rattle. Up, all of this stuff is gonna be rattling. Hopefully no mice pop out while we're in here. Oh, don't tell me that. I'm about to get <laughs> out. There's none in here. I, we don't know that. There's no holes for them to even come through. I don't think. Well, I mean, there probably are because they were in here before. Okay. You scared these little mice? What are they going to do to you? Nothing. I know. It's better than snakes. Exactly. Yeah, why didn't they have it this low? Why'd they have it so high? They had it all the way up here. This is a cool little shift knob. All of these lower covers are just gonna break, which we're prepared for that. Luckily, I think Garagistic makes new ones. Yes, sir. Look at that 35 year old dirt. Me and 35 year old dirt. Every time I see something that looks old, it's 35 years old. Cause this car is 35 years old. 26 year old dirt. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that was mean. That's not mean. You want to see me? No. Okay. This is why we didn't paint the floor. For real, like look, look at the mess that my car made. Let me take this out. Straight to the trash. Whereas Mighty Car Mod says, I think they say it this way, to the bin. Or is it in the bin? One of those. You know, those are actually the first car YouTubers that I ever watched. When I, the first car video I ever saw was from Mighty Car Mods. Isn't that crazy? Is this what happens when you get older? You just start reminiscing about things that happened before, like a few years back. I don't remember ever doing this when I was in high school. I didn't reminisce about middle school or elementary school. What, being born? <laughs> or the, well, I guess. <laughs> you didn't have that many memories, that's why. I guess. Many good memories. Yeah, you're right Okay, this that. got a little too deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. Next. They're not here for all that. That's why you'd start a podcast for all those stories. You know, we actually tried doing a podcast before we left California. We started a podcast. We never uploaded it. We never made it public. We got like the first, what, three or four episodes filmed? Yeah. But it was getting too deep and I don't think, we, we weren't that comfortable yet. I don't think we're that comfortable yet right now either. Putting all that information out there. Yeah. What is that for? Just a heat shield from the control arm because the headers go right through here or exhaust protects the control arm bushing from melting. You know the easiest way to put the S54 in? We just cut all of this out and then make our own. But that's, that's like my car's project when I start doing that. This one, we're not gonna go that crazy. But we're gonna get rid of all of the sound ending because we wanna hear the S54 anyways. And it's also heat shielding too, but we can just put different kind of heat shield or you know that gold tape that everybody puts. We'll try that out. All right. I think it's time to roll the S54 over. Let's do it, I'm excited. You gotta make your voice deeper when you say that. Let's, let's do, do it. it, I'm excited. Yeah. Like that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Do so right it. now we have the S54 on the engine hoist, but what do you think? Are you gonna put it on dollies? Yeah, because the way that I have it strapped up right now is so the way, that way it doesn't tilt too much because biased on one side. Um, so we're gonna put 
the transmission jack on one end and then we'll put the dollies in the front. And if we need to, we'll lift up the engine with the cherry picker from the top because right now the whole front end is still on there. We don't want to take that off yet, although it would make our life easier, but we've got other videos planned that require that front end. So for right now, we're just going to leave it like that, try to test fit it and see what all starts hitting and then go from there. Yeah, we're definitely planning ahead just in case we have issues with getting parts. Yeah. So that's why we're playing other videos to do with this and with other things. Yeah, other builds on. too. Like we don't want to just, you know, we don't want to leave y'all high and dry. I know a lot of people are probably already thinking about the C10 build, but the reason that we, we didn't really abandon it. It's still there. We're still collecting parts where there's still more parts that we need, but the viewers were not there. So it just didn't make sense for us to prioritize that because you know we're not really making any money off of that and we still have to spend a lot of money to get parts. So all the shortages and all that, that kind of screwed us up. And then we have customer cars come in, but the C10 will get worked on, it has to be done outside so when it starts cooling down again. So it's in for the most part. It still needs to go up a little bit higher. We still got to push it back a couple of inches, but I'm just looking at everything. So without the intake plenum, the brake booster is not a problem, but I, this brake booster is old. So we're probably going to upgrade it anyways. And then we're going to figure out the whole intake plenum situation. I'm not too worried about running the stock intake plenum. We can, you know, just do the tunnel thing that I was talking about. It's going to come to me eventually when I figure out what it's called, but we'll put it on the screen so we can run that or we can do a custom air box. That's not a problem um, once we get rid of this booster. But the main thing I wanted to check is to see how much space I have on both sides. And ideally, so, you know, depending on budget, time, and whatever we can get, I would want to do a whole tube front. That way we can, you know, push everything up a little bit more. Radiator will be up a little bit more get a bigger radiator in there and get rid of this radiator support that's spot welded or whatever to the frame because it's not like the E46s and E36s where you just remove this whole section. It's actually, you know, like the JDM cars where it's all one piece, you know, spot welded and whatnot. But for the most part, I mean, with the bare long block on the S54, we still have some accessories here. There's no issues. I mean, obviously the subframe's not going to work. I'm already looking at the oil pan where it's at. And yeah, it's right in the middle of the oil pan. So we're gonna have to make that custom subframe. So I think what I'm gonna do, we're gonna figure out a way to get this engine mocked up in here without the subframe and just make a makeshift subframe or something to hold the engine in place where we want it, figure out the transmission mount and go from there. Let's take a look at the transmission hole, the shifter hole, see how that everything is looking in there. All right, so the Guibo is actually right here. And the shift linkage, that's the factory E46 M3 shift linkage, is pretty much right in the center. But we're going to be moving this whole assembly back still a couple inches, so that shift linkage is not going to work. Now, before all the comments start saying, you know, the, the way that most people do the E30 S54 swaps, I know how it's done for the most part with the six-speed manual out of the E46. You use all the E36 parts, like the linkages and stuff. People that have done this before will probably comment, why not just put the M50 oil pan and all that? And I addressed all this before. We don't want to use the front sump oil pan and I want to you know, practice fabricating stuff. So that's why we're going to be making that whole custom subframe. And based on wherever I place the engine, that's where we're going to determine on the linkages and stuff. So another thing that we can use is like one of those chassis mounted shifters with an adjustable shift linkage. And that will allow us to place the transmission wherever we want as long as it's not hitting the firewall or transmission tunnel anywhere. There's a lot of adjustability here. It all depends on where I place the engine 
and where the subframe and everything works out. And based on that, then we can figure out drive shaft solutions and figure out transmission mount solutions. So we can even use the factory, like the E30 manual transmission cross member and make that work with this transmission. So there's so many options. It really depends on how far I, you know, how much fabricating I wanna do and how much experimenting I wanna do. That's all gonna be determined by wherever we place the engine. Man, it looks good in here, not gonna lie. <laughs> It definitely does. It looks, well, right now it looks so new. Even though it's dirty, it looks so new compared to the rest of the engine bay, which is super dirty. But I think it came out like, I'm so glad that we were able to strip all that stuff off. It makes it so much easier for us to see, you know, where everything is going to be placed and just how much clearance we have from everything. It just makes it so much easier. Now that we have an idea of where the engine sits, we can start ordering parts and everything to get this in here permanently. But in the next video, hopefully we're able to get the S54 to be supported by the chassis itself. So we're going to have to figure out exactly where it's going to be placed. Right now we have a general idea, but in the next video we're going to figure out the exact location before we pull everything back off and then we get into the more time consuming stuff of cleaning every single component. Yeah, but it'll be worth it. Oh yeah. Can't wait, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took us a long time to get to this point. Very but, long time. Yeah. It's like... 2 a.m. right now. Yeah, and we're super tired, and I think we're just gonna call this video here and call it a night. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notification to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you soon. And don't forget to follow us on all other social media for more real-time updates on this project and everything else we got going on.